presentation goes through a brain O2 response that we observed, which occurred 41 years after the original injury. And also here we're going to take you through some best practice um, guidance in terms of how to be successful helping you or somebody that you're trying to support go through the Brain O2 program. My name's Patty and I had a car accident when I was 17 years old and um, I wasn't checked out at the hospital at the time but I'd always felt afterwards that I couldn't remember I was having problems with schoolwork. Uh, specifically with physics, and I was very good in physics. Um, I had met Mark, he is a neighbor, and we had talked about my um, accident, and he, so Mark put me on one of his machines, and I worked out and kind of built up my strength for a couple of weeks. And then we went on a more aggressive protocol, and we initially had tested me and then two weeks later we did another test and I cannot believe how much I improved over just two weeks. I'm 58 so the car accident was when I was 17 years old. That's 41 years. So if you're thinking that an old accident um, and an injury that you had, however you had that injury, you still have a chance to greatly improve your memory. Um, I am sleeping a little better. Uh, my, um, all right, just protocol. So goals. Number one, we want to answer the question, which is how long after a concussion or traumatic event can Brain O2 help? Um, then we want to create some best practice guidance for to help prepare non-athletic users to be able to do the protocol. And this always starts with what we call, with our Brain O2 online course, which is available f on our Prime server. So if you're going to try to do Brain O2 or you're going to try to guide somebody else through, you want to go to our Prime site, which requires a login, go to Courses, and then we've got a full course laid out about how to work with somebody going through the Brain O2. Anyway, so it's four sections. There's a bunch of videos that talk about qualifying somebody to do the protocol, things you might want to think and know about, what makes a protocol work, some basic physiology, and so forth. So this is always the starting place about how you, how you can become successful. In this case, the user had not used Livo2 before and had not been working out, so we set her up on a training ramp, which took approximately 60 days to get her comfortable and strong enough to use Livo2 in the BrainO2 protocol. And then finally, we did one BrainO2 session at about, actually, I think it was more like 30 days, not 60. So it took her about a month to get in shape. So, uh, case study on this particular case. She was born in December of 1964. She had her concussion in approximately 1982, at which time she was 17 years old. Um, we did Brain O2 in May of 2023, which is roughly 41 years after her concussion. Um, Post-concussion, she reported a decrease in memory, uh, decreased scholastic ability because she was still in high school, uh, particularly with physics and math. Um, she reported a decreased ability to recall facts, trivia, and some compromise of language skills. On her post-recovery interview, she reported, re well, we observed restoration of normal uh, neurological panel scores, uh, a subjective shift in her perceived ability to remember trivia and facts that she couldn't normally remember, and improved cognitive ease and alertness. And she'd also observed that, you know, a persistent fatigue had resolved. Don't know how long the fatigue had gone back, but she reported restoration of normal energy. Um, neurological panel, uh, so this is uh, after we finished, the results were basically we had uh, red to green. So when you look at these, basically um, this legend up top, red is bad, orange is <laughs> also bad, low, but above average. So what we want to see is transitions from red to green. 
So the first set of things would be a neurocognitive index, which is sort of an overall score. But whenever you see a transition from a red number to a green number uh, over a period, like for example, her first test was the 19th of April and her second test was the 15th of May. So red to green means that part of her brain is working like it's supposed to or more like it's supposed to. So we see one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, transitions from red to green, meaning that part of the brain started working like it was supposed to, presumably due to restoration of blood flow. Uh, quantitative, quantitatively speaking, she observed a 63% increase in her composite memory scores, a 63% increase to her verbal memory scores, 39% increase to simple attention, 25% increase to visual memory, 38% increase to reaction time, and 22% increase to the aggregate or neurocognitive index. So what I'll say is, you know, this is a typical recovery pattern for a concussion where you have different part, you know, if there's a hit to the head, the brain basically ends up with a bruise. And then when you restore blood flow to these areas, they switch back on. Let's see, um, yeah, what else did it improve? Oh, oh, concentration. Oh, and I don't have to tell my new clerks anymore that um, their primary function at where I work is to know where my keys are. Um, I actually remember where I put them. <laughs> <laughs> this case gives us a missing piece of data, which enables us to start to speak to how long after a concussion. So number one, if somebody starts to use the brain O2 immediately after a concussion, which by we mean less than three months, normally they'll recover pretty quickly and they'll end up having nominal fatigue, as in they won't be very tired and they'll recover uh, completely or almost completely. If they use the BrainO2 protocol between 3 and 18 months past the incident, normally they'll say after the first workout, I feel normal, they'll, their fatigue will resolve, and their neurological store will rebound immediately, meaning if you test them in the morning before and you test them in the afternoon after, you'll see that the, um, I'll call it concussion scores or the deep compromised neurological performance will resolve immediately as long as it's only bruises inside the brain. Um, then we go to the next level, which is somewhere between 18 months to 10 years for other courses. Uh, again, once they do the brain O2, they'll come off and say, I feel normal. I feel normal. Um, but if it's in this longer term, there'll be a seven day dip. So if their neurological store scores are level A, if you test them before seven days, there'll normally be a dip, as in their neurological test scores will drop for about seven days. And then if you test them again at seven days, they'll rebound. And I believe the reason this is happening is when, you know, they pass the 18 month timeline, then you got neuroplasticity kicking in where the brain learns or teaches itself to work without the bruised tissue. And so um, it, when you recover, it takes a while to switch off those neuroadaptive, um, uh, that neuroadaptive circuitry. And finally, in this case, uh, after the 10 years, in this case, 41 year lag, uh, immediately got off, I feel better which is different language than I feel normal because after 40 years, she probably forgot what it was like to feel normal. Um, then um, we went through a neuronormalization cycle, which was part of the one month um, time lag between when she started. And then um, I believe what happened was that she had some dormant tissue that switched back on. I don't know if she came back to full what she was at 17, but the dramatic increases in neurological scores suggest something profound happened, which led to normalization or optimization of quality of life, such that what she expressed as post-concussive symptoms from 40 years ago seemed to resolve. Most users from three months to 41 years will usually report that they've got a warm sensation or a tingling sensation over or about the area of their head where they said they had the concussion. We've observed this at least a dozen times and whenever we observe this warm tingling 
report, um, we always see the improvement in the neurological test panels as well as statements like I feel normal or I feel better, meaning that the user's tendency to perceive a shift in reality is there and that what this warm sensation appears to mean is that we've reestablished blood flow to some part of the brain. So I'm going to do my best to interpret some observations. Number one, uh, the fact that we're seeing what I'll call instant recoveries uh, suggests that um, the post-concussion neurological performance recovers once you establish blood flow. The way I think this works is when we establish the pounding heart, pounding head in the or pounding heart in the ears, we've created enough force pressure to basically maximize blood flow through the brain. We've talked about that before, but then when we switch to high oxygen mixture, the maximum blood flow with maximum oxygen tends to break through obstacles or impedance in the blood flow through the brain and oxygenate tissue that has been deprived of oxygen uh, previously which enables the the brain tissue that's fed by that the, that blood supply to switch back on which is why we're able to measure uh, neurological performance restoration in literally hours if not minutes or instantly um, that's one. The second one is delayed recovery. Now, so for example, we've seen 18 months first, we were surprised at that, but now 41 years, what this seems to imply is that brain tissue can remain dormant for a very long period of time without actually losing function. So I think this is a source of hope for people that have had stale brain injury or, you know, stale concussions and saying that a lot of that tissue may be just dormant and when you return when you turn the blood flow back on or the oxygen supply back on it just switches back on um, in this case at 40 plus years there is no apparent limit to how long brain tissue can remain dormant now I realize there's such a thing as ischemia and permanent loss of function but in this case um, I'm just surprised and pleased that a person can have a part of their brain not working for that long and then just have it switch back on in a short period of time. In this case, it was a 30-day time frame. Um, next thing that uh, I say is that for concussions, you have a specific function loss pattern. So what happens is when you, there's a trauma to the head, the brain gets smushed up against one side, possibly the other, and that causes, I use the phrase brain bruise. I don't know if that's exactly accurate, but basically it compresses the brain and then that compression results in a injury to the vascular tissue which interferes with blood flow. When we do the protocol, we're basically punching through the resistance to blood flow, thus restoring neurological components like in the case this case we had I think it was six different parts of the brain that switched back on after the training protocol and how all six of those kind of came back on but in general the unaffected areas didn't sh show much of a change in performance where the affected areas went from substandard to normal performance um, we also notice that there's another category of brain injury, which is if somebody's chemically injured, poisoned, or otherwise affected, like chemical, then there's a general loss of function, which shows up in all, all scores across the brain, or most scores across the brain, indicating that it's a systemic or brain-wide general injury, as opposed to a specific injury to different areas of the brain. Um, observation is when you have one of these general brain injuries like a drug overdose or something like that it takes a lot longer and that healing occurs much more slowly and I think this gets into the nature of brain injury there's two different categories one there's the loss of blood flow when you turn the blood back on it switches back on but if you're dealing with an injury that's you know systemic or structural meaning like you've had a mechanical injury or material injury to the brain then we do see tendency for brain regeneration, neurogenesis, but that process takes a lot longer, normally measured in months or years.